One of my subscribers requested that I do a cover review of Sharon Williams' Drip the Mist. It's a beautiful paint color, but the question is, is it a warm gray or a cool gray? Well, technically speaking, it's neither one of them. And I'm gonna prove it to you by comparing Drip the Mist with other colors. And I'm gonna show you what the undertone of Drip the Mist really is and why this matters. I'm also going to show you just a few examples of why it's so important to compare Drift of Mist with your fixed elements and why lighting will play a big role on how this paint color could look like in your home. And towards the end of this video, I'm going to let you know what the design tip of the week is. So the question is, what is the undertone of Sharon Williams Drift of Mist? It's not a warm gray, it's not a cool gray, instead, it's a grayish. And what's a grayish? It's a mix of a beige and a little bit of a gray. And I'm gonna prove it to you why this is not considered a warm gray or a cool gray. So please watch carefully. So when I compare this with Swiss Coffee by Benjamin Moore, this is considered a grayish. It leans on the warm side. So you're gonna notice that when I compare Swiss Coffee with Drift of Mist, you're gonna see the gray of Drift of Mist instantly when you compare it to Swiss Coffee. Okay, fair enough. But what about when I compare this with Stonington Gray by Benjamin Moore, and this is considered a blue gray, watch what happens. When I compare this with Stonington Gray, you're gonna instantly see how Sherwin-Williams Drift of Mist is warmer than Stonington Gray, and, and then you're gonna notice the blue-gray undertones of Stonington Gray, but notice how Sherwin-Williams Drift of Mist doesn't have any blue-gray undertones. That's a key word right there. It doesn't have any blue-gray undertones. There's another paint color I wanna show you. Watch what happens when I compare this with Sharon Williams, agreeable gray, which is considered a warm gray. And for those of you that haven't been following me for a while, all warm grays have a green gray undertone. Watch what happens when I compare this with Sharon Williams' Drift of Mist. You're gonna instantly see how Sharon Williams' Drift of Mist is warm in comparison to agreeable gray, but you're gonna notice how it's a little bit lighter than agreeable gray. But more importantly, notice that you don't see any green undertones in Drift of Mist. This is why Drift of Mist is considered a grayish. But there's something else you need to know about Drift of Mist. It's a chameleon. And this is a really hard paint color to get right. So next, I'm gonna talk about lighting. So now when it comes to lighting, Drift of Mist is a little bit complicated because if you have a north facing room or if your home just doesn't receive a lot of natural lighting, well, don't be surprised if Drift of Mist looks like a blue gray, but if you have a south facing room or any part of your home that receives a lot of natural lighting, then Drift of Mist is gonna look like a beautiful warm gray that it should be. Or if you're just tired of trying those samples and you just wanna get it right the first time and you wanna prevent from making a costume mistake, then feel free to check out the link that's right down below. It's gonna take you to my website and I'm an international color consultant. I help people all over North America find the perfect interior or exterior paint color without ever stepping a foot in their home. And feel free to check out the reviews to see what clients have to say. Next, I'm gonna show you why it's so important to compare Sharon Williams Drift of Mist with your fixed elements. One of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of people make, and I don't want you to make this mistake, is that they don't compare their paint colors with their fixed elements. I want you to compare this with your kitchen countertop, your kitchen backsplash, your flooring, and the list goes on. So I wanna show you just a few examples of why this is important to compare it with your fixed elements and why it matters. So let's just say that you wanna paint your entire home uh, Sharon Williams Drift of Mist, but you wanna keep your kitchen countertops, and let's just say that it's a cream kitchen countertop like this. Watch what happens when I compare this with Sharon Williams Drift of Mist. There are two things. You're gonna notice first that Sharon Williams Drift of Mist is gonna lean on the cool side. 
And number two, more importantly, Thrift of Mess is gonna make this creamy kitchen countertop look creamier than it really is. And it's just gonna snowball from there because what's gonna happen is it's gonna make that kitchen countertop look old and outdated and you're just gonna wanna change it. So then it becomes a really expensive project. All right, so let's just say that you have a kitchen countertop that looks like this. It's like a warm off white, maybe has a little bit of a taupe undertone. Watch what happens when you compare it with Sharon Williams' Drift of Mist. It pairs beautifully together, and notice how it pairs and contrasts really well with the taupe undertones. So it's really important to compare this with your fixed elements, and there's a few things that you need to be mindful of. You've got to ask yourself this. Is Drift of Mist gonna be light or dark? Is it gonna be cool or warm? Or is it gonna be clean and muted when you compare it with your fixed elements in your home, including your interior decor? And the design tip of the week is, what happens to light grays in north facing rooms? And for those of you that found this video helpful, put a like, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Until then, I will see you in the next video.